In this video, we'll take a look at what the Razorhood website actually does. Now, I'm signed on to the site. Registration is always free. The first thing that I'm going to do is add a vehicle, my vehicle, to my garage. Now, I'm going to digitally borrow this Camry, and all I know is it's on the parking lot, and it has a license of PBX825. So let's add this vehicle to my garage. I'm going to add a vehicle, and all I know, as we said, PBX825, and from the state of Minnesota. And I'm going to estimate the mileage and a zip code. And the zip code is important because it improves the AI. And we're going to call this vehicle Henry. So we've added it to our vehicle or added it to our garage. And there's, there's Henry. So let's look at Henry. Well, from the license plate, now I know what the VIN is. And from that, I know the exact fluid and maintenance schedule so I can maintain my car properly over the long term. I can go down. I can look at the recalls on the vehicle what have been done, what hasn't been done, what are some of the details on that specific recall. Further down, we'll, uh, you can even see the actual vehicle as it was built from the factory. Core information, specifications, even what equipment was sold on the vehicle. And I can see this as the leather package, the convenience package, and the tour package. However, sometimes vehicles break. They're mechanical electrical devices and they don't last forever. So let's assume we have a problem. We're gonna go in here to Gus, our AI engine. And we're saying, I have a problem with Henry. And it says, well, what are you experiencing? We're going to say that we don't have any heat. And we can talk to Gus just like you would talk to your mechanic. And it comes back and it says, well, what else are you experiencing? Can you tell me more? And we're going to say, just started. I don't know much about this. Now, a couple more questions. Are, they, are there any warning lights on? No. Do you have an OBD2 reader? No. So I have fairly limited information. But Gus kicks in. And the first thing that you'll notice is it starts to give you a preliminary diagnostic of what the potential problem is. In this case, we can see the heater core is most likely, then a thermostat, then blend door actuators. And it gives you an assessment of the net price for some of these as well, if that turns out to be the underlying cause. But it does say, well, give me more information. And in this case, it's going to be interactive. And in this case, it says, does it happen when it's hot, cold, or normal? So we're going to say it's normal temperatures. Now, once that happens, you can see the diagnostics start to become more accurate. And in this case, we now know that this restricted heater core is about a 50% probability of why I'm losing heat. So let's take a closer look at this. And it says there's actually two solutions for this. I can replace that heater core for almost $1,500, or I can have it flushed for about $300, and I can even do it for myself for as much or as low as 20 bucks. I like $20 more than $1,500, so let's check that out. Now we're into the raise a hood solution. Everyone is exactly the same. What's the core problem? What's the solution? And we triage the situation so that you know what your next steps are. Is it going to strand me? Is there further risk of damage to my vehicle if I continue to drive it? How expensive is this? And not only is it a simple gauge, we actually correlate that to the actual mathematical risk that something's going to happen. On the stranding yourself, we also look at it for risk of further damage to your vehicle and how expensive is that repair going to be. So you can triage the system and make your decision for next steps. Well, here's the information you need when you're talking to your mechanic or your service advisor. Why does it fail? Is this common? Could I have done something to prevent it? And we even have an independent telemechanics standing by for a one-on-one -on -one video call with you at your convenience. And if you're being very industrious, guess what? We'll show you how to do it yourself. What are the parts I need? What are the specialized tools I need? And I can click the parts and it's going to open up specifically to the part I need. In this case, I need some CLR, which is fairly common. You can find that in many stores. And we can go down to the lowest section and we'll even show you how to do it yourself. I'm going to turn down the sound. Every video is structured the same way. It's a step-by-step -step process. Step one, step two, step three, and the easiest solution of how a mechanic actually does this. This is a three-minute video. The actual repair is closer to an hour. When you're done, we ask you, did it work or not? And we ask you that information because that further feeds the AI engine, Gus, so it gets a little bit smarter with every repair. Listen, if you drive a used vehicle and you're trying to lower your cost of vehicle ownership, you owe it to yourself to check out Raise a Hood.